heading north from the Red Sea, we sailed on our sea day towards the Suez Canal. The sky was clear, and it looked like we were going to have an enjoyable experience and looking forward to appreciate the scenery along the way. It was in the afternoon when we reached closer to the entrance of the canal at the Gulf of Suez and watched the container ships, ferries, and fishing boats come and go or anchored off and waiting for confirmation by the authority to proceed to the canal. Very well, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain and uh, we have now arrived to Suez Canal Anchorage. We'll be remaining here throughout the evening to complete the uh, four monthlies required to pass through the Suez Canal and we expect the actual transit to commence around about four o'clock tomorrow morning. So once again, we will be remaining here at the Anchorage throughout the evening and expect the transit to commence at 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, this is a very estimated time it all depends on the Suez Canal authorities they will dictate when we need to start moving so let's then have a nice evening on board the Safa Princess and uh, enjoy the Suez Canal transit tomorrow It would be hours before we proceed to the Suez Canal. And as we waited, we watched local navigation agents took care of their business in preparation for the transit. The pilot arrived and came on board very early in the morning. It was still dark, and most of us had only a few hours of sleep, not wanting to miss our approach to the entrance of the canal, as the captain made the announcement to get ready for the transit at 4.30 in the morning. And we just entered to the boy channel, and uh, we are number two in the convoy, and it's a fairly big convoy this morning. So there's in total 36 vessels in total, so 34 behind us. So now we are in the boat channel, will be approximately another five nautical miles before we actually enter into the Suez Canal entrance. So with this speed, it takes just over half an hour before we are inside the Suez Canal. A little bit misty morning, unfortunately, so the visibility is not the best. However, I'm sure you will enjoy the transit today. The crowd was in position for the best viewing point, looking to the front and to where we were heading to. But it didn't take long before I found a good spot. We started the transit and entered the canal from the southern end through the Suez port. While transiting, a tugboat followed and keeping our distance away from the convoy of ships before and after us. We were second in the convoy of 36 ships going north, following a military ship in front of us, which had the transit priority. All the other type of vessels in the convoy following behind us. As the morning cleared up, the view at the entry point turned into our first close-up photo opportunities on the port side of the ship. Everyone was silent and seemed at awe at the sight of the town's surroundings and its harbor facilities. It would be the beginning of our new experience in this slow cruising journey of the Suez Canal. On board with us was a retired captain who pointed out fascinating facts and points of interest as we transited the canal. Egypt has a population of some 84 million people, but only about 1.4 million of those live in the Sinai. 
The Sinai, over on our right hand side, it's a triangular shaped peninsula of some 23,500 square miles and effectively is Asia. On the left bank, on our port side, you can see a lot of vegetation, housing, there's been forts and uh, military placements along the canal. And it looks in fact quite green, all thanks to the irrigation that comes down from the Nile. The Suez Canal is one of the world's most heavily used shipping lanes. It is a man-made waterway that connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. It runs north-south across a narrow piece of land called the Isthmus of Suez in Egypt and separates Africa from Asia. It provides the shortest water route between Europe and the lands around the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. Construction of the canal was begun in 1859 and completed 10 years later. It extends 120 miles between the Egyptian cities of Port Suez in the south and Port Said in the north and crosses flat sea level terrain that requires no locks. Vessels sailing from Asia to the east coast via the Suez Canal have to pay tolls on average 465,000 US dollars for passage, which are based on the weight and type of the cargo. Along the shoreline, there were construction activities happening. We passed workers waving at us with their backhoe equipment. And as we waved back, they had put up a show for us. For a moment, we were entertained and had a good laugh about it. Oh, he's gonna get on board. And then we got to see a group of uniformed soldiers doing military exercises and in the process of assembling reusable floating pontoon bridges. They took the opportunity for a group picture with us in the background. Much of the view on the starboard side is desert as far as the eyes could see with occasional building structures along the canal. Also on both sides of the canal, there were security positions and watch facilities at regular intervals, with fully armed soldiers keeping their eyes on us or waving at us as we passed by. Past the Great Bitter Lake, the canal allows northbound and southbound ships to transit in both directions simultaneously with its two-lane bypass sections. A slight dip in the sand on the, uh, on the middle section of the canal and you may catch a glimpse of one of the first southbound ships. It's a container ship and it's called the Maersk Kalma, 299 meters long. Along the shore, ferry stations were built to bring people to the other side, while container trucks wait in line to board barges to be moved when the coast is clear of the shipping convoy. It also appeared that the canal is into kayaking adventures but there were none of these activities happening at the time of our crossing. And we came across a fancy vacation resort strategically built to overlook the shipping vessels transiting the canal. It was very cold for much of the time we were crossing the canal, although it was a clear day outside. In the top deck's Skywalker Lounge was where some of us hang out to get warmed up and still have a good view of the canal. Long hours of transit since the early morning and sometimes running around between decks to see the changes in the surrounding views was a bit tiring. 
We easily moved around the ship to admire the canal's changing nature landscapes or have a good look of the shoreline attractions. But once in a while, to recharge throughout the day, I took my breaks in the comfort of my stateroom or visited the convenience of anytime dining before heading back for more photo shoots and trying not to miss seeing anything during our transit. As we continued our transit heading north, there were other significant points of interest along the way, including a glimpse of the El Ferdan railway swing bridge that is no longer used on the other side, due to the expansion and the construction of the second bypass lane on the east side of the canal. But we went through the other bridge, the Suez Canal Bridge, also called the Egyptian-Japanese Friendship Bridge, which was opened in 2001 and built with the assistance from the Japanese government. The other attractions along the shore of the canal included several mosques or residential buildings and other symbolic monuments. One monument is dedicated to the workers of the canal. In the end, crossing the Suez Canal was quite a sight and a great adventure of more than 10 hours. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon and after the local pilot disembarked, we sailed out of the Suez Canal, past Port Said to the Mediterranean Sea, and finally proceeded towards our first European port of call, Piraeus in Athens, Greece.